Hi everyone, Tom here from Frontend Beginners and in this video we'll look at how to use CSS Flexbox inside a CSS grid layout. Let's get started by creating our basic grid layout. To do this I'm going to create a div below my header here with a class of grid container. Inside it I'm going to create four more divs each with a class of grid item. Inside my first grid item div, I'll insert some dummy text of grid item 1. I'll then copy this and paste it into the other three divs and update the text. Over in our CSS, let's target our grid container class and give this a max width of 1000 pixels, a height of 650 pixels and center it horizontally using margin zero auto. Next, we'll turn this into a grid container by setting its display value to grid. Using the grid template columns property, I'll create two equal width columns by providing a value of 1fr space 1fr. The number of individual values that we provide in the grid template columns property determines the number of columns in our grid. The individual values themselves determine the width of each column. In this instance, I've provided two separate values, creating two columns, each with a width of 1fr. 1fr is a fraction unit, which instructs the browser to give each grid column one fraction of the available width, resulting in two equal width columns. Next, we'll define our rows using the grid template rows property. I want to create two rows, so I need to provide two separate values. This time, rather than having equal height rows, I want the first row to occupy three quarters or three fourths of the height of the grid container, and the second row to occupy only one quarter or one fourth. To do this, I'll give my first row a value of 3fr, and my second row a value of 1fr. We're instructing the browser to divide the available height in the parent grid container into a total of four fractions, or four slices. We're then giving three out of four slices to the first row, and one out of four to the second row, creating our three-quarter and one-quarter height rows. Finally, just for some visual separation in this example, I'm going to provide a gap value of 10 pixels. This creates a 10 pixel gap between our grid rows and grid columns. Now I want to target the grid item class and give it a background color of light gray. Looking in the browser, we can see that our basic CSS grid layout is now complete. We've got two equal width columns with two uneven rows. Now that the outer grid layout is complete, let's imagine we want to create a flex container inside the first grid cell, so here in grid item one. Doing so allows us to create a separate CSS flexbox layout inside of our CSS grid layout. Let's begin by separating this first div here from the other grid items below it, just for the sake of clarity. Next, I'm going to give our first grid item an additional class of flex container. Let's delete this dummy text inside of our grid item and replace it with a div with a class of flex item. Inside this new div, we'll insert some dummy text of flex item 1. I'm now going to copy this first flex item and paste it two more times below and update the text here. So we now have three individual flex items inside our flex container. Over in our CSS, let's target our flex container class and set its display to flex.
Next, let's target our flex item class and set the flex shorthand property to one. This instructs each of our flex items to grow and fill the width of the flex container. Just for the sake of this example, I'm going to target each of our flex items individually by giving each one of them its own class. For the first one, I'll do flex item one. And then for the second and third, I'll do flex item two and flex item three. I'm going to give each one of these items a unique background color just so that we can see them clearly in the demonstration. I've already written this code here, so I'm just going to copy and paste this into my CSS, but please feel free to copy this yourself if you want to follow along exactly. Looking in the browser, we can see that we now have three flex items inside our parent flex container in grid cell one. If I reduce the width of the browser window, we can see that our outer grid is flexible and that our flex items are also flexible inside their grid cell. With the basic flex container set up, we're free to use any of the CSS Flexbox properties to create whatever kind of Flexbox layout we like. Because our CSS grid and CSS Flexbox containers are entirely separate, we can affect each one individually without affecting the other. Just to briefly demonstrate this, I'm going to give flex item one a flex value of 100% and also set the flex wrap value to wrap on the parent flex container. Looking in the browser, I've now affected my Flexbox layout without affecting the outer grid layout. Likewise, if I wanted to change the overall structure of the grid, for example, adjusting the width of the first column to 3FR instead of 1FR, we can see that the grid layout changes, but that the Flexbox layout remains the same. Again, when I reduce the width of the browser window, everything remains flexible. I think that just about covers the basics of using CSS Flexbox inside CSS Grid. While it is possible to create similar layouts using only CSS Flexbox or CSS Grid, having the ability to combine the two gives us greater flexibility when designing and coding our web pages. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.